Welcome to City Exodus. Welcome back to City Exodus. You are now watching episode 9 of Country Living Chronicles. You are in for a treat this episode as I met this couple and was able to get to know them. And just hearing their story, I am sure you are truly going to be encouraged. And so I hope you enjoy this episode of Country Living Chronicles. Hi, my name is James. Hi, I'm Georgina. And we both grew up together in a very rural town in western Texas that had less than 500 people. Despite being a small town, there was an Adventist church that I grew up in. Um, but growing up in the Adventist church and in my uh, little town, I was the only SDA student in my classroom of about 20 students. Yeah, I grew up Catholic as were most of my classmates. We would go to um, catechism every Wednesday. On Thursdays, we'd go to school, talk about what we learned uh, on at catechism, talk about um, the teachings, and um, of course, and he would kind of stand up and tell us like, well, have you ever thought about it this way? Maybe that's not right. And we'd kind of gang up on him, but he stood firm and um, you know, told us the, what he believed. Yeah, it made for a lot of arguments because all of my classmates went to the same catechism. <laughs> and so they would all gang up on me. And so I said, have you even read the Bible before? Like, you know, the Bible says this or that. And anyway, we had good conversations and we always laugh about this now. But my wife used to say when we were kids, uh, I will never be Adventist. I don't remember that we're saying that, but that's what he says. <laughs> he remembers. But after that, he said he started to pray for me. And so at some point, the church, the Adventist church, was going to put on a, uh, an evangelistic series. And he um, invited me to go. And at the same time, um, my mother, she was on her own. Um, she had her own spiritual journey going on, and she was looking for truth. She had a co-worker also invite her to the same evangelistic meetings. and. Um, we, we went, we went to the meetings and he was so shocked when he saw my family and I walk in. Uh, we attended all the meetings and by the end we decided to get baptized. Yeah, I think that was one of the first times in my young life that I remember feeling, wow, God does answer prayers. Uh, and I, you know, kind of just submitted it to him in prayer because we were good friends and she was one of the, the students that I got along with. And I started to have a burden for people in my class. And so it was amazing to all of a sudden go from being the only SDA in our class to all of a sudden having a friend um, to, to, to learn with and to uh, just, you know, be there to, to teach the rest of our, our classmates. And then by the end of our senior year, there was actually uh, us and and two other students that were SDA by the end of our high school year. So we were very happy about that. We ended up being the top four students in yeah, our class. Adventists were the yeah. smartest in our class, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we, even though, you know, we say um, the, we were Adventists, you know, we're saying it in a way that, you know, we were, we were blessed by the fact that we had biblical knowledge, you mm -hmm. know. But maybe even in some senses, we were still kind of living in a very secular space too, right, mm -hmm. um, in our high school because it wasn't an academy and we kind of grew outside of the Adventist education bubble. Um, but uh, in that sense, it afforded us uh, an opportunity to really have, you know, know and understand that the Bible was paramount in our lives and in our, in our understanding and worldview at that point. Um, but yeah, I remember uh, specifically 
uh, going to church with a family that was very Adventist, you could say, <laughs> and they had moved out to this area to do country living, and they... To set up a mission, too. Yes, to set up a whole mission where people from the cities would come to stay with them. Um, they would do different treatments like hydrotherapy for people that were suffering from depression. They would have all sorts of um, uh, programs to help them and learn... Uh, uh, natural how, remedies, simple that's right. remedies. Mm -hmm. Natural simple remedies, and those that family was a family of paramedics, and they were like really into the Adventist health message. You know, they were uh, very modestly dressed. They baked their own bread. They like stored up food in their pantries, and um, you know, at that time, oh, they were vegetarian, vegetarian. and. We were Adventists, but in this region did not grow up, you know, following the health councils of LNG White. And, uh, you know, it was very common to find meat at potlucks all the time. And that was just normal for us. And so we thought of them as the weird people, to be quite honest. <laughs> and we thought, oh, man, they're kind of weird. So I, and I guess we didn't realize our worldview at that time not being outside of this small town in Western Texas, we had not really, you know, uh, mingled with a lot of other uh, SDAs at that point. But yeah, you could say that we were in the church, but also kind of oblivious to some, some things too at mm -hmm. that time in our life. Um, but that all changed as we, we got older and kind of had different and varied experiences. So yeah, after high school, we ended up uh, graduate. Well, in high school, we graduated at the top of our class, valedictorian mm -hmm. and salutatorian. And of course, you know, we both knew that we wanted to pursue higher education. And mm -hmm. with there being so few resources in the area that we live, we knew we were going to have to go have to, to a leave. bigger city. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we went our separate ways. We went to different colleges, but still managed to maintain contact during that time. Um, and unbeknownst to us, we ended up pursuing careers in medicine actually which is so surprising because we never we didn't know what we wanted to do when we graduated That's high right. school yeah. yeah and I tell her still like I, I I don't know why I didn't realize how you went into medicine and I ended up going into medicine but that never seemed to be a common thread or anything that we had ever even discussed in high school knowing each other all that time That's right. um, so yeah I went off to become a physician and I became a physician assistant yeah, and so we both completed our training at different places across Texas and ultimately ended up coming back together. And, yes. you know, we say that God has plans that we don't even understand sometimes. But um, yeah, he brought us back together when I thought, you know what, I'm going to go off into the city and I'm pretty sure I'm going to find some other people there. And, you know, I, it's just interesting how God can sometimes bring you back to the place that you started and not even realize that that's what he had in store for you all along. <laughs> Yeah, after our training, we ended up coming back together and we got married and we moved to the Metroplex, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area where I was completing my medical training. We hadn't anticipated having kids so early uh, uh, to the time that we got married, but God had different plans. Right. And so our we, plan was to wait until after residency, but... Yeah, yeah that didn't happen. We had, a, we had a child in yeah. my intern year. Um, but it was a blessing to both of us and uh, yeah, just learning what it means to become parents and understanding that uh, being a parent and being a godly parent are two different things. You know, you can provide for children's needs like, you know, clothing and food, but providing for their spiritual welfare um, is a whole different thing, right? Mm -hmm. And sure, it was early on and our first uh, child was just a baby, but those were all questions that were starting to go through our mind. Like, mm -hmm. what are we gonna do in the future? Where are they gonna grow up? Um, what kinds of things do we want them to have in their early childhood? Yeah. Um, at that time, you know, we were very blessed to be part of different churches, different um, churches in the Metroplex. Yeah. That was one of the, I guess, benefits afforded to us in a the big city, city right? Yeah. Like all of a sudden we were able to experience different facets of the SDA church, right? You could go to a Filipino American church, you could go to a Spanish church, a Brazilian church, um, uh, a, close, a church close to where you live, a church farther out in the country if you wanted that. There's all sorts of flavors of churches. Yeah, <laughs> and so in that, which was really neat, but we also kind of fell into that category of being those bunny, bunny Christians, Christians that just kind of hop from one church to the other if the potluck was good at this one <laughs> or if you had friends at another one or and a special event here or there and then no commitment that's no, right and no i think that the no commitment part was important because it was really survival mode too right like mm -hmm. i was always busy 
And there was many Sabbaths that I was in the hospital and she was by herself, but it was hard to really feel like because of my schedule, I couldn't commit to anything in any of these churches. Um, but uh, the Brazilian church became a very important part of my life during medical school and they were my second family. Uh, the only issue is once I started residency, it was very hard to, even in the city, drive an hour. That was a long time to go to church, right? And so we ended up kind of staying more locally to where we were living. But we did feel that that um, pull in our hearts, right? Like it's nice to be spiritually fed and to go to places where you can be taken care of and enjoy an experience. But we also felt that we were not being, you know, contributing to a church like we should in that time. Uh, but God had other plans in store. Uh, because not long after that, I graduated from residency and then we were starting to look for what the next opportunity was going to be for us after finishing my training. We knew that we probably weren't going to stay in the city, that we needed to um, take care of our debt. That's right. That we needed to um, just have that freedom and the way that we were going to be able to accomplish that is through probably loan repayment and you knew of an opportunity. That's and right. that came up, you started exploring um, all your options and then you... That's right, yeah. And so I got into a loan repayment program through the state of Texas, which ended up being such an amazing blessing because when Georgina and I got married, she was so nice that she brought her debt along with her for, for, for both of us to, to work on. And so I really started to feel the burden of that. And, you know, medical school can be several thousands of dollars, right? And PA school is no different, you know, it's it's not as much, but still substantial. And so I felt that way on my shoulders. Because at this point, you're the only one working. I was staying home and taking care of the baby. Yeah, and that was a big change in our plans as well, because Georgina at that time was feeling the burden of contributing to the household while I was surviving on this meager residency salary. And she thought, oh, like we can't make it without me working. and. That was a work that God really did in our hearts. And I was secretly praying that the Lord would convict her, you know, to stay at home with our child. And when she told me that, I said, I'm totally in agreement. Praise the Lord. I will make it work. If God can do all of these things that he did throughout scripture, he's certainly going to take care of us. And so she made that decision. And so, yeah, it meant that I really started feeling the weight of uh, what all that debt meant for us after I finished. And so... Um, when we were thinking about it, we took a short pause to go to do a mission opportunity in Guam, on the island of Guam. So we were there for a month and it was such a blessed experience to, to experience that. And uh, we loved our time there, but knew that we had a lot of obligations waiting for us when we came back home. And so, yeah, we ended up, interestingly, making the decision to go back to our little rural hometown because it fit the criteria for an underserved um, an underserved city in, in Texas. So I was able to transfer that loan repayment program to that new place that I was gonna work at. And so the primary reason for going back rural was to get rid of debt. That was the main prayer of our hearts at that time. And we said, Lord, we just really, we want the freedom that comes from being able to, you know, not have to uh, trade time for money at a job because we, we have this huge amount of debt. And uh, a big story in that is that the Lord was able to provide this program to pay over $150,000 of debt for, for, my, for my medical schooling. And uh, when I look at that, I say, man, God gave me medical school for free. And it was his idea because I never wanted to be a doctor. And that's a whole different story in and of itself. But when I look back, I can see the blessings in that and saying that, wow, he provided, provided not only for my college education, but also for my medical schooling. And even though it was delayed and several years later, it was no less significant. It was so amazing when I had that realization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, we both ended up coming back to a rural setting in Texas. We and were hesitant, you know, we were like, how are we going to survive without our conveniences like <laughs> Costco and Trader Joe's or all the restaurants that there's not any restaurants where we're going back to. Um, but we said, okay, we got to do this. We can, we can do it. We've lived there before. We can do this. And so, um, we came back and I mean, I think not only have we gotten used to it, but we we love it actually. Right. Sometimes when we go back to the city, it's, we kind of feel overwhelmed. Like there's just too much or I, I, I'm exhausted living this and just this day of being in the city. So. That's true. Yeah. 
Yeah, because as our kids started growing and we had our second child in the city, the wheels really started to spin in terms of like, what did we expect for their growing up, you know? But, you know, driving this kid to this school and the other kid to the other school, you know, this constant bustle of going to this place and that and all of these activities. And we just started to remember our childhood and how we grew up and the simplicity that comes from being in a place where there's lots of natural elements, um, where you can actually spend time with family. It was something that was missing for us. You know, I had been away from home for 10 years at that point, And we really started feeling uh, the importance and, and, and virtue in having a good support system. Um, and so you know, coming back to the country, although it was a little bit um, we were a little bit nervous about it. So we started to see little by little the blessings of coming back to the country life. Um, despite us not even really having a burden for say, you know, we want to be in the country. Mm -hmm. It was in the process of living it that God started to show us the benefits. Um, yeah, because as I came back and started working at a hospital, um, for the first time I found myself looking for new hobbies and I started gardening and my first garden project was a row of zucchini and they were the most significant, you know, zucchini for us because it bought, it made me buy into the idea that we could start growing food for ourselves and it felt so accomplishing to be able to feed your family something that you saw sprout and grow and for the children it was even better. I remember uh, our, our youngest just watching the sprouts and coming inside with such excitement to say did you see the sprout and every new leaf and it was just such a joy mm -hmm. to watch those types of things that we would have never been able to do if we were living in the city the way we're doing it now and it just continued to grow from there because every year just making improvements uh, and learning a little bit more about what it means to garden and enjoying the fruits of those labors in the summer with yeah. uh, a lot of meals prepared for not just ourselves, but our neighbors and sharing a lot sharing of the produce. The produce. Yeah. 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 Really quickly, people started to learn that we were the people that had cucumbers and squash and zucchini and yeah. tomatoes and yeah. peppers. And they'd ask, hey, do you have any basil? Yeah. But I was going to say, even when we were in the city, we were always seeking out like That's the, the um, you know, things that would bring us back to nature. Like if it was a uh, walking the trail That's or walking true. by the river like we we were always seeking that that was probably our favorite parts of the city even though we were thinking what are we going to do without these stores or other things it was actually the like you know that that we were in the city that was our favorite part or favorite thing to do was let's go walk by the river let's go walk the trail let's um go have a picnic outside like i guess those are things that we didn't know that we missed or you know that we were used to when we were little kids like oh being outside we actually missed we were doing that in the city and that was our favorite part yeah you know? so i we agree came back it was like oh we're, we're outside and now we get to enjoy the sunset in the city i i don't remember really appreciating the sunset so much and out yeah. here we can and looking at the night sky we can see the stars and we couldn't appreciate that really in the city either that's true. It's like all, our, our hearts knew what we needed mm -hmm. and we would seek out those activities and not realize like, hmm, it was always like that, like the Lord knows, right? Because nature has a way of drawing our hearts closer to him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why now you see people that are in the city, they want to go to these beautiful parks or whatever natural spaces that exist. You know, there's a bunch of even uh, research that shows if you have green spaces, right? People are healthier. And so without kind of realizing it, you know, we were pursuing those things that um, the Lord knew that we needed to, to maintain health and, um, you know, being a good frame of mind for our jobs that were really demanding at home or at my hospital. And so, yeah, coming back out to the country was just a huge upgrade in that sense to be able to appreciate all of that stuff. Un, unencumbered by the traffic, by the nightlight um, and just to you know, get a picture of, of the night sky, it makes you remember God's promises to Abraham. And it's, it's just a beautiful way to experience God through nature. Amen. One of the big differences when we moved to the country was our church life. We ended up back in this little rural country SDA church that was for la we were basically dying. You know, There was not a lot of members. There was people that had left after the pandemic that never returned. And we were kind of in a position also, we felt we couldn't be bunny Christians anymore. Like there was no other no churches. Other church. <laughs> or like a hundred miles maybe. That's right. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's where there's like a, a paucity of churches、uh, in this area, so we found ourselves really needed there. You know, we were having to we learned to contribute in a lot of other ways that we maybe had not even thought before. You know, and taking roles that we probably would have never taken in another church, and that was just because there was nobody else to do it. And <laughs> so. Um, our church life became more、uh, robust in that sense that we were spending a lot more time in in church, trying to help、uh, grow the church and help for our children, children that were in the church. The only children in the church at that point. That's right. We first came, and I think every time we were always just trying to plan for Sabbath. Okay, what's coming next Sabbath, and what's coming next Sabbath? Which where before I was like, where do you want to go tomorrow for church? Where do you want to go? <laughs> That's true. Oh,、uh, maybe we can go over here. Here now, and, but now we're like we knew. Okay, we need to be at church because you know you have this to do and I have that to do. And, yeah, just feeling responsibility、right. to contribute to the congregation. And the interesting thing happened in that、uh, by the time my loans finally got paid off, I started feeling like okay, we have freedom now. <laughs> We can go anywhere now. We can start decide to go be missionaries back in Guam, or we can go back to the city. And sometimes there was thought of that, you know. And I think our family was nervous that we were going to leave back to the city because we had so many friends where we used to live. And it was a tempting thought because we were starting to feel like, where are our kids going to go to school? You know, we don't have any young friends that are at a similar stage in life. We were like the only young family in our church. And we had been here. For about four years at that point, and you always said that you had your life.、That's、you had、right. been living life like in four-year increments, like college, med school, residency. And you're like, okay, now it's four years here. Maybe it's time to go somewhere else. That's right. And、um, so yeah, we were making plans, thinking, okay, this is this this part of our life is over. Yep. Let's, let's go on to something else. That's right. I even started taking interviews in different、mm-hmm. places to explore the possibilities, and、um, yeah, in the midst of that, God had different plans. We had a very interesting encounter with a stranger in a parking lot at Walmart that ended up turning into、um, a really pivotal moment for us in our time here. At that point, I felt like it was time for us to leave, but. Bringing home a stranger that gave us some advice that I wasn't even anticipating at that time made me start to remember that story of Abraham and him entertaining those strangers, and how Hebrews thirteen two says, "Don't be afraid to entertain strangers, for in so doing some have entertained angels." And at that point, I knew that the message that that gentleman had given me was a godsend. At that point, and so. When we understood that God had kept us here for a reason and that He wasn't ready for us to leave, we said, "Lord, we need you to meet us on certain things. We need other children in the church. We need it to grow. We need friendships to pour into and community."、Um, we want the church, new life, to, yeah, new, new life for our church.、Mm-hmm. And so, Georgina and I decided to start praying for that consistently on a consistent basis. And God started making amazing things happen <laughs> in the middle of the desert.、Um, Uh, we started finding new people that just would show up to church. I started Bible studies at my hospital with a couple of different people that led to baptism.、Uh, new families that were seeking country living made a part, made themselves a part of our congregation, and they had children.、Um, there was a lot of people. Visitors every week, it seemed like, of、mm-hmm. the church, even if they were just passing through, but. It was a new face, and we were happy to worship with them that Sabbath. And there was many times that I would say, "Lord, bring somebody new to our con."、Mm-hmm. We would pray the whole week, "God, bring someone new to our congregation." And never failed that when we prayed that prayer, there was somebody new every mm-hmm. Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And so we started seeing God move in amazing ways、mm-hmm. during that year, and that really was just confirmation to us that the Lord had a work for us to still continue doing、mm-hmm. uh, in the place that we were living, despite not having all of these things that we thought we needed, like you know, Christian schools and community in the city or other or other types of conveniences. He just made it very clear to us that. He had. He wanted us to continue growing and blooming where he planted us during this time, and it's been a blessing to see what has happened in our church.、Yes. Um, it's it's thriving, and there is a component of young adults that is almost equal to the like traditional amount of church members, and it's a beautiful thing to see happen and how God has answered our prayers. 
Church growth is amazing, but the better part of it is when we're able to contribute and grow the church locally. And we started to really feel a responsibility for that, as well as the new members. They were very passionate about outreach. And so uh, our church started uh, having a really kind of ministry with friendship, right? Learning to befriend people in our community uh, by either providing music, healthy cooking uh, in our potlucks and um, just being part of the community that's right helping Showing out up with at community events yeah and cleanups and that type of thing so that started really getting us a presence in our church where we're able to reach out to other people in the local community mm -hmm. and that was the, the better benefit of having more people it's like God sent us the people and equipped us to start working together to, to reach out and and so one of the decisions we made too was to start having a, a plant-based potluck which a lot of the guests really enjoy and my wife and I for think every Sabbath mm -hmm. for all the visitors that were attending we said we need to feed them there's no no restaurants to eat at here anyway so they, they need to um, have a good meal and we said let's do plant-based let's make an effort to make it healthy plant-based potluck and so we did yeah and just realizing that that is as much a ministry as any other ministry in our church and it's we've really seen the payoff there for the people that do attend and the the interesting part is just the full circle because growing up in that church we start to think about that one family who is really living a country message and present truth at that time and we were totally unripe for that message at that point but then we think back to that lady and we're like man now it's all coming full circle. We're starting to do the things that she wanted us to do at that we're time that she tried now. to Yeah. <laughs> that she started trying to teach us and we're like, we've become the weirdos <laughs> that except, are baking. Except I don't think that we're weird at all. And she wasn't weird. She was just ahead of her time where we weren't ready we were at that time. That's right. And it's a message that really the world is starting to live out in many ways mm -hmm. and seeking after. And so it's been really an eye opener and to just to come home to us to really uh, understand what we've been gifted with, right? And the health message and the, the message of country living um, and really trying to understand those things because the world is hungry for them and they're looking for it on Google, on social media. And so we've realized that that's a, really a strength that we have as a church uh, where, we're, where we're at to, to be able to reach people with that message. And so we always think of that sister and we're very grateful um, and just also a little bit sad that, you know, at that time we were not, you know, right for that message. But God has his way of teaching us things, right, through various experiences. And it's a gradual work sometimes, but we're just grateful for it having happened. Um, and so during that time as well, I started to feel a, a need in my heart for a change in my own job. And so uh, I made the decision to start my own business. And it, it was coming from a lot of different places, but primarily wanting to be able to incorporate ministry in my work. Um, and when I was working under a um, hospital and clinic that wasn't my own, it was difficult sometimes to incorporate all of those things. And so God started calling me there and kind of hesitantly, I was thinking about it and praying about it. And it's difficult to really leave a position of security and benefits when you have a young family. So these were all things that I was considering. But um, as I've been reading through Patriarchs and Prophets, he was giving me timely lessons every step of the way that were just confirming his will for my life and so yeah six months ago i made that decision and since then we've been planning uh the future of my practice as a medical physician is and the the thing that's been the most joy is starting to plan together as a family for that to be our family ministry that we could work together and i said what more of a beautiful thing than to work together as a husband and wife but also with our children teaching them the virtue of what it means to help people acquire healing not just through uh, traditional means but through the Word of God right and to have spiritual healing to learn the, the important truths of what it means to follow you know the ministry of healing and, and the concepts that we know to be found in the Bible which is truly the greatest medical book ever known right mm -hmm. Um, and so that's that's the next phase of, of what we've been planning and we've been just thankful that God is leading us in that direction and asking him for wisdom every step of the way and and prayers in that regard to just help make those paths straight that may be crooked and to establish the plans of our feet if that's what he has in mind for us. Okay, well, moving back over here, sometimes people or friends from the city ask, well, what do you do all day? Um, how, how do you live out there? But I've, I've really enjoyed it. I live a very simple life, but I'm with my family 
all the time and I love it. I mean, sometimes our excursions are maybe just a walk down the street to the park, maybe just even going to the post office. But um, I mean, it's something that we get to do together and I, I love it. It's a, a wholesome life that I feel like I'm giving to my children. They can go outside and play anytime they want and I feel that they're safe. I don't have to be worrying about, um, you know, something bad gonna happen to them? Is somebody gonna take them? I'm, I mean, what what dangers are there out there for them? I mean, I, I feel very, very um, okay and, and happy that they're out there outside getting dirty, being in nature. And I mean, I, it's a simple life, but I, I love it. And I don't know, I just, I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't even go back to, to work actually at this point because I know that my priority is my children and my, our family and, and home life, so. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to go outside, especially like in the mornings when things are kind of slow and the girls are already active out there playing with the animals. Um, we have the five ponies, we have chickens, the girls will go collect the eggs. Um, help feed. Help feed. They pick up their cats and give them their morning greetings and um, play with the, the goat that they helped uh, uh, bottle feed <laughs> to raise her. And I mean, it's just a wholesome life that... Yeah, um, showing them little virtues and responsibilities through yeah. practical ways of life. And I think the biggest lessons I've learned is that we have to just commit our plans to the Lord and He will establish our steps, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important thing because it could be in the city or the country and we know that the Lord says, bless you'll be in the city and bless you'll be in the country. Um, but there's a certain way that, you know, sometimes being in the country, experiencing sometimes difficulties and challenges that allows us those opportunities to trust on God in bigger ways than maybe we wouldn't whenever we feel secure. And sometimes that can happen in the city. But overall, we're just grateful that God mm -hmm. has brought us to a place where we can experience Him in a more uninterrupted way in our life. And we wish that for anybody. If you're contemplating it, I would tell you over and over again, I do it for my family, I do it for my children, I do it for our relationships, I do it for you know the ministry opportunities because there is need everywhere. And so we have to be um, getting ourselves used to the fact that there's a closing work for us to do. And if we're not practicing it, we're not going to, we're going to miss our opportunities. And so God will equip you. You just have to be willing to answer the call. Amen. What an amazing testimony. Raising your children in the country, in the rural setting, just like this couple was when they were growing up, it brought them back to their roots. And so um, it's amazing how God works when you lay out that foundation. I also got the fact that when I was listening to their testimony and just asking them questions, I thought that they received the country living message from reading the book Country Living, or maybe they heard someone preach about country living. But no, they were just being prayerful about it, remembering their, their upbringing, and, and them just wanting to go back to, the, to a rural area, to where they grew up, and also just wanting to be out of debt, uh, just wanting to put their children in a better environment where they get homeschool. It's not like they read the book True Education or they started going to all these health reform meetings or, or True Education or, or you know all these different kinds of meetings or camp meetings. It's just God was leading them as they asked God for guidance and counsel. This is exactly where God led them and, and to give them the opportunity to do outreach and do God's work. It's just amazing to hear God just leading in families' lives, in people's lives, and leading them to where He wants them to be. We hope you've been encouraged. So be blessed and be a blessing. Be blessed and be a blessing. That's what he had in store for you all along. <laughs> <laughs>